Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Jeffrey Zalatoris, pastor here at Harmony United Methodist Church. I welcome you to our worship service this day, Sunday, March the 29th. This is again one of our virtual online worship services that we engage one another at some distance uh, in this season of uncertainty, in a season where we watch out and care for one another. Friends, I give thanks to God for your faith, for your perseverance, for your stamina and strength in this season. And today I'll begin by mentioning our readings that we'll be offering in case you wish to read along this morning or this afternoon. Today our readings are from Daniel, the sixth chapter, verses 25 through 27. That will be our call to worship. And our reading for our message today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Our call to worship this morning is Daniel 6, 25 through 27. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear this word. God's servant Daniel remained faithful, even when he was cast into the lion's den. Yet Daniel survived that ordeal, and King Darius wrote to all peoples and nations of every language throughout the whole world, May you have abundant prosperity. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion has no end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. For he has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Friends. be to God. This day we will offer a reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 through 14. Please follow along. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley, 
It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The inspired word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be to God this day for this reading. Prophesy, said the Lord God to Ezekiel. Prophesy and proclaim God's words to a scattered and separated people, saying this. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. Let us pray. Holy God of creation and resurrection, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the most powerful images in all of Scripture is the story of Ezekiel's prophecy. For the nation of Israel was dead. Her people were scattered to the four winds by the Assyrian armies. And the nation of Judah was dead. Her people were scattered in four directions by Babylonian armies. The peoples of the nations of Israel and Judah, they were exiled, they were dissolved, they were separated from one another. They no longer dwelled in their homeland, no longer lived on the mountains of Judah and Israel. They no longer lived as inspirited beings under God's authority. They were like dry bones scattered across a dry valley. They had been separated from their homeland for decades. Without their worship of God, they were severed from their relationship to God, and they wondered why God's presence was not with them. They were dry bones, abandoned, scattered, alone, without the breath of God in them. Ezekiel lived among those exiles, living in the dry valley of Babylon. He was one of the myriads of thousands who had been scattered and separated from their homes and homeland. And yet in God's time, God graced Ezekiel with this very vision, the vision we read today. 
A vision to offer hope to the dry bones, that remnant of Israel and Judah who lived without the Spirit of God in their midst. This common lectionary reading of Ezekiel is a vision of these dry bones, these scattered and grieved peoples, and it's hitting home to me this year. Now, we have not lived in decades of exile ourselves, but we are in a time of self-quarantine, social distancing, separation. These are strange times for us. And though we have only been doing this for a short time, we feel its effects already. Grief. Loneliness. A desire to do something, a desire to go someplace, a desire to visit people. It's like having a case of winter's cabin fever at the end of March that's going to extend into April. But without the snow, without the skiing, without the snow angels... And we know we have a time still to come before we fully emerge from this cabin fever. Am I already weary of the stay-at-home orders and the businesses closing? Yes, I am. Am I already weary of ordinances to refrain from public gatherings and not to gather and worship on a Sunday morning together? I am weary of it. And it taxes me. I feel out of sorts when I don't come to worship on a given week because worship is life-giving for me. It's like having that wind of God blown into my lungs to give me faith and hope each week. And so right now I feel a bit like I am living on a life detour, meandering through unknown lands and unknown places. And frankly, I'd like to get back on the main road where the road signs are clear, where the scenery looks familiar. Yet we know we will be on this detour a bit longer. But we will also get back on the main road. It will just take a little time. We can persevere, but also this is a time that we can look to those folks in our midst who have needs While we are on this detour of social distancing, if you have needs, if you know a neighbor who has needs, getting food or drive to a doctor's appointment, there are folks here who are able to help. Call the church office, reach out, let us know. We can find folks to help. We can strengthen and support one another in this season. Beloved, we can and we will weather the weeks of this social distancing. We can endure this because we know we are doing this to safeguard and protect those who are vulnerable to illness in this season. So as Ezekiel prophesied his vision to give hope to a hope-deprived people, I too rely on visions of hope in my own faith to sustain me in this season. I continue my praying and my devotions, reading through scriptures. And I rely on God to keep my heart open to the voices of the vulnerable, not to ask too much for myself. I pray for God's gentleness for the most vulnerable among us, those with health concerns, praying for those with mental and emotional concerns, praying for those with grief and whose burdens are too much to carry alone. We pray for those who are facing financial difficulties in this time and those with faith concerns. We've truly only had a a short window of separation right now, but it does feel like a long time already. But remember Ezekiel. He prophesied to Israelites and Judahites who had been separated for decades They had lived so long without praise and worship. They needed to start all over. They could not rebuild on their own. They had to rely entirely on God's grace and the Spirit of God to revive them. They needed God to breathe into them and breathe over them life once more. 
Ezekiel's words of God's breath coming to the people are comforting words to us because they're familiar words, because these are words that remind us of God's very acts of creation. Because we return in these words to the book of Genesis, when the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Ezekiel's vision reminds us that God is a God of the living, who breathed light and life into a dark and lifeless void. Ezekiel offered this vision, a reminder of God's might, in order to bring hope that indeed God would breathe life back into those separated peoples. God would bring that nation together once again, bone on bone, sinew on bone, muscle and skin, and yes, the breath of God would breathe life into that nation once more. They would be a vast multitude. They would rise and follow God out of their exile and out of their separation. That vast multitude would follow God to their homeland, the mountains of Judah and Israel. And there they would rebuild their lives with God at the center. Ezekiel had a message for the peoples in exile, for peoples who lived separated and distanced. And the message was this, God knows your concerns. God knows your discomfort, and God will return you, reconnect you, reconcile you. God will help you feel alive again. Friends, the season of uncertainty does not have to be a, a season of forlorn separation, but instead look upon this as a time, a temporary period for renewal of faith like an extension of Lent itself. We can face this season of uncertainty to show God's love in new ways. In this season, we can offer the grace of God to new families. In this season, we can encourage and exhort one another to be refreshed by God's breath to uplift our faith. Through God's Spirit, God gives life, even when we are temporarily separated. So just as God breathed life into the lifeless exiles, God breathes life into you and to me, even in this temporary season of uncertainty. So inhale deeply. Breathe in. Let the fullness of God's breath fill your lungs. Let God's breath breathe grace into your soul, breathe hope into your mind, breathe strength into your body. Breathe on me, breath of God, so I might better see you, better love you, better testify to your goodness in my life. And go, therefore, with hope from these words in Ezekiel. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. Thanks be to God. Amen.
This time we offer our prayers and petitions for one another and for our world. With each petition, we'll end with the words, God, in your goodness, respond out loud or in your heart, have mercy on us. For the renewal of faith, a commitment to Christian discipleship globally and locally, and a revival of God's beloved to demonstrate their love of God and love of neighbor, God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. For local and national leaders to use wisdom and resolve to make decisions that defend the poor and the vulnerable, God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. For the healing of bodies and minds, the healing of families, and the healing of communities, and for the safety and commitment of health care workers, God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. And for all the petitions that you have on your hearts and minds this day, for your family, for your friends, loved ones, folks near and far, we lift those together in our prayer for God's affirmation blessings, healings, compassion, and mercies. God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. Friends, we are a thankful people, and we have opportunity to give thanks to God in so many ways, to give thanks for all that God has offered us in our lives. As we continue in our ministry to show God's love to each other, to the community, and to the world, let us continue to offer our support to the ministries here at Harmony United Methodist Church. This very week, we have been finding folks to reach out to, to offer gifts of food and clothing, personal hygiene items. We will continue to offer that where we can and where we see the need. But I invite you to consider this week continuing to make your offering to this church through our website by mailing in your offering or bringing an offering here to the church during the week. That way we may continue to serve this community here in Marlow and Falling Waters. And I offer a prayer this morning for our offering. Gracious God, you have awakened faith in us through your amazing grace. You give us hope. As a vibrant and virtual community in worship, we praise your holy name and offer our thanks to you, our gifts to you, and our service to you. Amen. Join me in offering our prayer as the children of God in confidence we pray these words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Friends, I'd like to offer one announcement before we separate at this moment here and, and go back to our, our days here. Next week begins Holy, Holy Week. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And I'd like to invite you to uh, pay attention to our church website and Facebook page as we will be sending information out about offering a, a time of drive-in worship on the next two Sundays an opportunity for folks to gather in the parking lot, in your cars, or in your lawn chairs, and to be able to listen to uh, our worship time together um, while we are celebrating the Holy Week. So pay attention to our messages this week on Facebook and on our website. And I offer you a blessing to go through this week. Holy God, in your goodness and in your mercy, may your face shine upon all who have heard this message. May you bring your grace, which is the grace of your spirit, into each of our lives, that we may go forth renewed and revived as your servants, through Christ our Lord. Amen.